Now one thing to understand about the downswing. The downswing actually happens during the backswing. You heard that correctly. Welcome to the channel guys, my name's Ryan Moke and today we're going to talk all things backswing and downswing. It's a question asked a lot in the golf industry, how do I get to the top of my backswing? How do I start the downswing? We're going to talk all about that and more in today's video. Let's get stuck in. So to kick off this video today, what I'm going to do is show you what the typical recreational golfer does in their backswing and their downswing. I see it every day on the lesson tee, something I help players with all the time. And what I see with the recreational golfer is typically I will see them do two things from this face on uh, position you see here. Typically I would see a player that reverse pivots. And what I mean by that is they turn and have too much pressure on the lead side. Now, if you're not up to date with the terminology there, lead side is towards the target and trail side is away from the target. And I use these terminologies for a left and right-handed golfer because if I kept saying right side, the left-handed golfer would be hearing a different terminology. So the average golfer or the recreational golfer would typically be pivoting or turning into that lead side too much. They're over this way and they have to then basically throw their hands at the ball as they move their pressure back towards the trail side and they spin out of the ball, causing a cut across shot or a really high shot, fats, thins, the works. The other flaw I see in recreational golfers, not just recreational, good players obviously do this too, but I see them slide or sway away from the golf ball. And what that looks like is, instead of turning this right side, or trail side should I say, they actually push their hips this way and they slide off the golf ball and that ends up pushing them too far to the trail side of the ball and it's very, very difficult to get back to the ball effectively. So as we see from this angle here, those movements, a player may reverse pivot onto that lead side too much, causing that upper body to come over the top, all right, or the upper body to tilt back as they try and make that work, or they have the slide in their golf swing, which makes it very, very difficult to get all the way back to the ball. There's a lot of movement happening and a lot of inconsistencies in their ball striking. So to help the recreational golfer feel the correct sequencing in the golf swing, what I like to do is I like to place two alignment sticks in certain positions on their body. The first alignment stick is going to go through the belt loops. So all I'm doing here is taking my pants and putting these alignment sticks through the belt loops and make sure that they are even on both sides. The other stick is going to go across my upper body. Now the first thing I like to do with these players is I want to understand, can you disassociate the lower body from the upper body? And can you disassociate the upper body from the lower body? A lot of the best players in the world or elite golfers can do this. And this is one of the main reasons why a player can basically start their golf swing the way they want. And this is one of the things that elite golfers do very, very well and it allows them to sequence their golf swing the way that we want. So before we get into all the ins and outs on the golf swing, let's do this test. So one alignment stick through the belt loop, one across the shoulders, and all I want you to be able to do, without the top stick moving, I want you to be able to rotate your lower body around in a circle. And all it's going to look like is this. So that's there, and that's to the right. So all I'm doing without the upper stick moving is rotating my lower body. The recreational golfer, if they do it incorrectly, may look like this, and they have a really hard time disassociating the upper and lower body. What we're gonna do from there is we're going to practice disassociating the upper body from the lower body, and it's going to look like this. Lower body stays nice and still, and my upper body turns to the right, turns to the left. And as you can see, the lower body isn't moving. I'm really trying to feel like my core is being held, my lower body is steady. And again, the recreational golfer who struggles with this may look like they're trying to keep everything steady, but what happens is that lower body moves without them even trying. So if you're someone who struggles with this, 
Just be aware it might be hard for you to sequence your golf swing correctly. If that's something you've been chasing for a long time, I'd be looking at these exercises and trying to improve them through physio and gym work. So now we get into what is the proper sequencing for our golf swing. Now let's talk about the backswing. Ultimately, what we are trying to do in the golf swing is exactly like when we throw a golf ball, we want to produce power. How is power produced in the golf swing? Well, all we need to do is think about throwing a ball and all we're going to do is turn into the right side or the trail side and then we're going to recenter. We're going to go back towards the target, start to turn and release that ball at the last minute. That's how we throw a ball really far. What we don't do trying to throw a ball is, is to get to the top and then basically feel like our arm goes first or our chest goes first or our lower body goes first. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to make our sequence as good as possible, as effortless as possible. I'm gonna show you how to do this. So let's talk about how to move in the backswing. So what I really want to do in the backswing is with these two alignment sticks, what I'm going to see, the, in, the initial part of the takeaway, I'm going to turn my chest just a little bit. Now you'll notice that I'm not moving my lower body just yet. Once I feel like I've got that little bit of tightness in my back or my range of motion is, has been exceeded, I then want to feel like my lower body can rotate to the right, okay? And I'm going to feel the pressure move into the trail heel or the right heel on my right foot. So obviously what you can see now is a slight upper body move to start, a lower body move to help my body rotate into that right side. And what you're gonna notice here is my upper body or my shoulders have turned 90 degrees based on this stick and my hips have turned roughly 45 degrees. And this is a really good um, benchmark to, to, to see yourself as to, to, to find out if you've turned enough. So obviously this is all very individual. If you struggle to turn, you may have tightness in the back, you might have tight hips. I'm not saying that everyone needs to turn 45 degrees and 90 degrees. That's why getting individual coaching or going to see a physio or trainer to sort your body out is very helpful. So once we've got to that backswing position, we now need to understand the sequence of the downswing. Now I hear a lot of players, what do I start the downswing with? And, and typically it comes from players saying, I need to start the downswing with my hips. Now this is incorrect, and I'm gonna show you why. If you were to start your downswing with your hips, this is what your swing would look like. I get to the top of the swing, and I'm gonna start my downswing with my hips. Okay, so there's my hips doing the work, right? But I can't, I'm not doing anything right now. I can't, I can't hit a ball like, ball like that. So what they do is they shift their pressure back towards the target and still think they need to turn their hips. Okay, well now you've turned your hips, but what about my upper body? My upper body has now gone all the way back here because my hips have turned so much. So a lot of golfers forget about the upper body and I think this is because so many amateur golfers actually come over the top, so they've been told to start the, the golf swing with the hips. So here's the correct sequence we should be doing. We should be starting our golf swing with the lower body first. And what I mean by lower body is a pressure shift from our trail side to our lead side. That is not the hips, that is a pressure shift towards the target. Think about throwing a ball. We turn to the top of our swing, we pressure forward, we start to turn the torso, we start to bring the right arm through, and then we release it, and that would be the club. So how it looks with these sticks here, is we get to the top of our swing, once again, with nice loading pattern, nice turn, 90 degrees with the shoulders, 45 lower body. I'm in the right heel right now. What I'm going to feel as I pressure back towards the lead side, and I'm feeling like the pressure is going into my lead toe or my, the, lead, the ball of the lead foot is where my pressure is going. From here, I want to try and catch this upper, this upper stick up with the lower because the upper stick is behind the lower right now. So I'm going to start to turn the upper body and notice my lower body is moving as well. It doesn't look like this. 
Okay, that's independent. What I want to do is I want to move my upper body around, my lower body's doing its job, and then from there I can continue through. Obviously I don't have a club in my hand so you can't see the arm in the club. But that's what it looks like from a body perspective with these alignment sticks. So we're going to do that one more time from a face on view is we load the right side into the right heel, pressure into the lead side, start to turn the upper body and complete our goal swing. What does this look like from a down the line perspective? Once again, we get into our posture, we rotate into the trail heel, we pressure shift into the lead, uh, the ball of the lead foot, my chest starts to catch up with the lower body, and then I'm finished my goal swing. Now, one thing to understand about the downswing, the downswing actually happens during the backswing. You heard that correctly. So on a 3D graph, what we're going to see is the, the player will start their downswing once the lead arm, okay, the left arm here for a right-handed golfer, reaches parallel to the ground. That's when their body has maximized their rotation to the right and they're going to ever so slightly start to shift their pressure back towards the target right at about lead arm parallel. Some players actually try and feel like it's earlier. So an exaggeration of this would be, I turn my backswing and my left arm's parallel and now I'm actually starting to what we call recenter. So I'm getting to the top, I'm loading my right side, so I'm currently to the right of the golf ball and then I need to feel like I recenter as I start my downswing. So it's a little bit confusing there, something you probably don't have to think about too much, but if anyone was to ask, when does the downswing start? It's when the lead arm is parallel in the backswing. That's when most of the best players in the world start their, start their downswings. So a final recap from both angles of this drill with a golf club. I'm going to start the golf swing with my upper body first. So I take the club away with my upper body I then need to get the club to go a little bit further, so what I do is I start to increase the turn of my lower body, my arms follow my rotation, and now I'm fully loaded into the top of my backswing. What I do from here, again, I get to the top. Remember the downswing starts a little earlier, but what I'm going to feel is the pressure moving into the ball of the left foot. My upper body starts to turn. My left arm starts to come down and then the club is the final thing that moves the sequence into the downswing. From this angle here, once again, taking that club away from the ball with our upper body first, lower body goes along for the ride, we're at the top, loading my trail heel, I feel like I pressure towards the target, notice how my arms haven't done anything yet, pressure moves, chest turns, lead arm starts to come down and the club hits the ball all the way to our finished position. So there you have it guys, there is the complete rundown of backswing and downswing. Now just a reminder, everybody in this game is individual. If you need help with your own game, please seek expert advice. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like and subscribe button. Comment below if you've got any questions. Until next time, thanks for watching.